doing an Image of God Chapel in which um, we're having a few students share a, snap, a snapshot of their stories. Um, and the hope of this is to begin more discussion and create more awareness about the diversity of experience that violins have. Um, so it, it, to me, it's pretty amazing that God has chosen to fully manifest himself through humans. You know, of all creation, we are the image of God. Um, and so each of these people, as C.S. Lewis said, these are... Um, not mere mortals. These are eternal souls uh, representing God. And, and to, this morning we'll get to, to see a better view of who God is um, through these, these persons. Um, so we have four students this morning sharing. We have Tim Scroggins, Abby Lung, Rayanne Lopez, and Claire Walker. And they'll each be sharing their experience um, of coming to understand their identity in Christ um, in light of living life with a disability. Um, so, let's go ahead and welcome up our first speaker, Abby. Um, so, my name is Abby, and I am made in the image of God. And uh, over the past several months, that truth has really changed the way that I view my own identity. Um, it's so easy to be defined by my abilities, you know. I'm a musician, a psychology student. A lot of times I like to think of myself as a deep thinker. Um, I'm a... I, I just love making my friends laugh, and, and I try to be a good listener. And although those things are part of who I am, and they're a big part, they're not my identity. I've also had to fight the temptation to be defined by my inabilities. Uh, the fact is, everything I do has been in some way affected by the way um, that my body works, that it doesn't work the way that I wish it would. And even though my life on this earth will be marked by physical brokenness, that's not my identity either. And the reason I can say this so confidently is that all of those things are temporary. One day when I get old and my joints fail me even more than they already have, I might not be able to play the piano anymore. And people might always, not always think that my jokes are funny. I might not always, you know, I might not end up working in the field of psychology. But even my disability is temporary. Someday I'll be given a new body and the aches and pains that I have now will be but a distant memory. But for now, since I do have these talents, passions, and limitations, I'm doing my best to figure out how that all fits together with my true identity. And that identity is this. I am God's creation, his image bearer. I am loved by him in a way that defies explanation. And for now, that's all I need to know. I've had many people ask me if I want to be healed now, and honestly, I don't. I have every confidence that God could heal me, and I'd be so grateful for it, but being disabled has given me a unique perspective that I, I wouldn't trade for the world. And like I said before, my entire way of life has been built around my disability in some way or another, and to give that up would be like giving up a part of myself. Yeah, sometimes living with a disability can be uncomfortable and frustrating and discouraging, but it can also be deeply rewarding. I don't sit around every day begging God to heal me because, again, he will one day. My conversations with God often include venting my pain and frustration, but I also recognize that he has a greater purpose for me through that. There are days that I wake up with this burden that I will never be all that people expect me to be. And then it's like God puts his arms around me and he says, but Abby, I never expected you to be more or less than you already are. This issue of identity is one that I could talk about for hours. And I would love to meet each of you and hear your stories. If you see me around, come say hi. Seriously, I love talking to people. Um, and, you know, I know that it's not just me that struggles with identity. Um, my guess is some of you have had this struggle, too. And right now, maybe some of you are thinking, well, I'm glad you can see your disability in such a positive light. But I don't know how to think that way about my own brokenness. I'm not saying that this world doesn't suck sometimes. You know, pain and grief, they're real. And that's, that's definitely been true in my own life. That's something I can affirm. At the same time, realize that you would not be you without the things that you've gone through. 
And pain can be something that God uses to make you stronger. Now, having said that, I would encourage you not to shy away from those moments when you're bothered by how messed up life is. Because it shows that deep down you recognize this isn't how things were meant to be. The fact is everyone is broken and the thing that holds them together is their identity. And what stronger identity is there than the fact that every person is immeasurably loved by their unchanging creator. So yeah, I'm disabled, but I'm empowered by this simple truth. My name is Abby and I am made in the image of God. Hello. My name is Claire Walker, and I am made in the image of God. We aren't always responsible for the circumstances in which we find ourselves. However, we are responsible for the way we respond to them. We can give up in depression and suicidal despair, or we can look to a sovereign God who has everything under control, who can use the experiences for our ultimate good by transforming us into the image of Christ. That was said by Johnny Erickson Tata. Um, she's a famous Christian leader and author um, of the disabled ministry um, called Johnny and Friends, and she's also a quadriplegic. She's been um, a huge inspiration and hero um, of mine. And she mentions that we're responsible for the way we respond, and there are two responses. There's response to our own experience and then to those around us. And Christ is the example and the one who transforms us. Uh, many of you may have seen me around. I have a service dog with me. Um, her name is Lily. Um, I have her because I have a neurological disorder. Um, it's a syndrome and it causes fainting episodes and other chronic symptoms that I have to deal with on a daily basis. And she was an answer to prayer. Um, she helped me obtain my independence. I used to be in a wheelchair um, going to classes my senior year of high school because fainting was an everyday problem, sometimes twice a day. And we could never get my blood pressure up high enough. Um, I missed out on a lot of things, but praise be to God, I'm back on my feet and I made it here to Biola, which was a huge answer to prayer. Um, disability is a tool of transformation. And through this syndrome, God has shown me how I can absolutely rely on him. And it is a beautiful thing. And he draws us closer to him through our hardships. And disabled people are audio-visual aids. We are representations of God's handiwork. Unfortunately, society and the world has it all backwards. They view it as a problem. You have to have that perfect body, that perfect place, because you need to pursue your happiness, the things you want. It's all about gaining material things. And they fail to realize that there are two types of people in this world the disabled, and the not yet disabled. In reality, disability is the norm, though people deny it. It's shameful. But hardships are essential for us. Look at the life of Christ. When he was tempted in the wilderness, why, would, why did he have to go through that? It was to reveal what was on his heart and what kind of Messiah he would be. And through suffering, he conquered the world. There wouldn't have been any other way. Suffering strips us of distraction and it enables us. Another quote by Johnny. Perhaps the greatest good that suffering can work for a believer is to increase his or her capacity for God. The greater one's need, the greater will be our capacity. And the greater our capacity, the greater our experience of our Savior. And just this past weekend, God revealed something. I had grown content in him, and that was a beautiful thing. And I was realizing he was using me as an audiovisual aid. But my capacity was being hindered by my pride. I was clinging to my disability for fear of many reasons. I didn't want to lose that connection with God. But I also didn't want to, I got greedy over the spotlight. 
nobody likes a main character in a movie or a book not to have a backstory of hardship or terrible things. They're a hero. Everyone looks up to them. And I was starting to do that. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9, Paul says, So to keep me from being coming conceited, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I want you to make note of the word conceited. I realized I was starting to worship myself through my syndrome. And when Adam and Eve, when they reached for the forbidden fruit, what were they saying to God and about his handiwork? They were saying, you're not enough. Your grace is not sufficient. And I was saying that same thing to God. I was saying his grace was not sufficient for me. I wanted more of the spotlight. He wasn't all that I needed, but in reality, he is all that you need, and he will sustain you. So what about you? Are you letting God's grace be sufficient? Are you letting his power become perfected in your weakness? God doesn't need you, but he wants you to partake in him. He wants to pour over you his love and his grace. And to those that are not yet disabled, how are you responding? Are you accepting, allowing God's grace to flow through you? Are you being God's love and acceptance? And I'll finish by saying this, verse 10. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am Claire Walker, and I am made in the image of God. Hello, my name is Rayanne Lopez, and I am made in the image of God. As I stand before you all today, I am feeling so joyous, but yet feeling so shameful and embarrassed as I will be sharing with you my journey of having a learning disability. Throughout the time of my journey, I knew that the Holy Spirit was with me in this part. And if I'm truthfully honest, here at my time at Biola, I sometimes feel people will look at me for the disability before they look at me. But I say with full confidence that I learn differently, and that doesn't mean that I'm stupid or not capable of doing things. My journey here at Biola has been quite the ride. Of course, of my time here, I've always felt that my school studies were just a little difficult until I had a few professors approach me, thinking that I might have something due to my academic skills. Through that time, professors saying things, my heart turned bitter and started to have a whatever attitude toward my studies. But through that, in the work of God, <clears throat> it took me three years to finally get tested and think maybe these professors are right. It was the hardest phone call, trying to call the BCC, saying that I need to get tested for a learning disability. But over the course of me saying yes to God, Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. A few weeks after making that phone call, they said we can start in, over summer. So last summer for five weeks, I was being tested. Every time I went, I cried. I said, this is stupid, this is dumb. Why me, God? Why can't you pick someone else instead of me? But as I sat in the room, Jesus revealed to me the book of Matthew on his life of Jesus's ministry. And at the time he was betrayed and rejected before he was going to the cross. It was hard sitting in the chair thinking, this will be the easiest thing. But I remember not being able to do the simplest things. It was the most shameful, humiliating thing to put myself aside and do what was right by being tested. In the midst, the Lord revealed to me that he is still at work and he is still in control of all things, even in the midst I did not see him. I remember I kept saying, Lord, let others see me before my disability. It took time to fully embrace that my brain works a little differently. 
but that daily I sit with God and I say, give me peace, give me joy to face the day no matter what frustrations my academics may rise. After the Lord truly had to break me down over the rest of the summer before starting the first day back of last semester, the first week I hesitated, but I walked into a room that was beyond shameful that I have always disliked, the learning center. I could remember in that moment that I walked in, I was embraced with such warmth and love and joyous hearts, and I was reminded that I am not alone in what I am facing, that I am still loved and I am still made in his image. So moments after having to use them, I fell in love with the quiet spot having to take my exams, but mostly I fell in love with the staff. I thank God that he has placed amazing people in my journey, for they have made such a huge impact on my life. Their uplifting and encouraging words always remind me that the Holy Spirit is with me and that he calls me his beloved. This is just part of who I am and who God created me to be. But for me, I know that he, all of us here today have a sin or something that we are all ashamed and embarrassed of. And truth is, if we are honest with ourselves and with others, Instead of having those emotions of being humiliated and embarrassed, we can embrace one another in the way that Christ embraced us. We all have something that no one wants to talk about. I am here to tell you that you are not alone, and the Lord is forever most present in the midst of all things. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, for the flame will not consume you. Today, I say keep believing and keep trusting that God's plans will still prevail. I know that the Lord used this process to help change me for a greater purpose, for his honor and his glory. When I see others, I don't see them through my lens. I see them through the Lord Jesus Christ's ends. In ending, I, am, I urge you and encourage you to embrace your weakness for his glory. We are all fallen creatures that still have a purpose, calling, and identity. Do not exclude yourself because you are different or have something going on with your life. Seek his kingdom. Seek others out who want to be there for you. God uses us in moments of our doubt, worry, and even the why questions to him. Hello, my name is Ryan, and I am made in the image of God. Hello, my name is Tim, and I am made in the image of God. In 2003, my mom took me into the doctors because my right foot was swelling and sore. Uh, it wasn't until 10 months later, after x-rays on x-rays, MRIs, and other things that six-year-old me wasn't too stoked on, uh, that I was finally diagnosed with juvenile uh, rheumatoid arthritis. They told me that, it'd get, uh, that I'd grow out of it with age, uh, but a year later I was re-diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, and they told me that it'd only get worse with age. Um, but I've since been re-diagnosed re with uh, seronegative spinal orthropathy, which in any case is more fun to say. Uh, <laughs> during, during this period of uncertainty, uh, not knowing what's going on, I remember a night when I was lying on my bed and just crying to my mom, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Um, Fourteen years later, at the beginning of this semester, I found myself in a similar spot, just weeping and asking God why. The idea that sometimes bad things just happen uh, without, without anyone's wrongdoing uh, is, has been labeled complex wisdom. But, but for me, this has felt like anything but wisdom. Yet God is, is teaching me to trust him and in the goodness of his character, uh, even when suffering makes this harder to see. In Philippians 1, Paul says uh, that God has graced us not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer with him. Being formed into the image of the mighty lion requires that we also be formed into the image of the sacrificial lamb. So suffering really is a grace um, because by it, we become more like Christ. But suffering doesn't usually feel like grace. My arthritis has been a frustrating source of insecurity for me throughout the years. 
in high school track and field, I'd always come in last by a lot. And uh, in my SAT uh, essay section, I did horribly because I can't write fast. Um, and I've just been ashamed throughout the years to say I can't do that. Um, but even here, God is redeeming my story. Although my arthritis makes me weak in ways, God is perfecting his power through my, through my weakness. In my weakness, God reminds me um, that I need him, that I need to lean on him uh, in order to be upheld by him. My arthritis has actually served a good purpose in this sense. So then if it's served a good purpose, does that mean that God doesn't want me to, doesn't want to heal me of it? Um, I'm not sure, but I know that God doesn't need my weakness to use me. I think the point is that he can use anyone, uh, weak or strong. God has demonstrated his faithfulness to me by sustaining me through all of this. He has given me an enduring hope, a hope by which I still believe that he is good, that he loves me, and that my, my future is secure in him. My future could easily be a source of anxiety for me because I want to be an overseas missionary, and I don't really know how my arthritis is going to play into that. Um, but God sustains me by helping me to overcome my many fears and replacing he is replacing that fear with peace. Finally, God is sustaining me through community. He placed people in my life who care for me and help me in my hurting. They speak truth against lies which might have driven me to despair. And by their love, I see God's love for me all the more clearly. My mom has probably done this for me more than anyone else. Um, Every night uh, for years, she would uh, massage my feet to soothe the aching, but perhaps even more so to model Christ's selfless love for me. And uh, recently when I asked her if she had kept any records of uh, this when I was figuring out that I had arthritis, uh, she sent 18 pages of her own journaling, journaling which uh, detailed all the minute uh, symptoms that I had uh, during, from during that time. And here once again, my mom gave a profound picture of God's love for us. Uh, no suffering of ours goes unobserved by God. Like my mom noticing whenever I was favoring one leg over the other, Christ sees us in our pain. And he knows what it's like to experience weakness. But he also knows what it's like to experience victory, and he invites us to join him in the hope of that victory. So I pray that we will continually be drawn more and more into that hope. My name is Tim, and I'm made in the image of God. My name is Rachel Martinke, and I've had the privilege of working in the Learning Center for a little over two years now. And it was originally Jennifer Fanning, who's the director of the Learning Center. She's been working in the department for over 12 years. She was the one to be here with you this morning. But Jen was taken to the hospital this week for emergency surgery. So that's where she is now. Um, and so she's unable to be with us here this morning. Um, but those of you who know Jennifer know that her job at the Learning Center and being um, director um, is something that she puts her heart and her soul into, her work with these students. And so the words that I share with you today are her words, and they're a message from her heart. Jen says, I've come to realize over time that when people hear the words learning center, they often have an idea that we only work with students who have learning differences. While that is true, our scope of work with students is so much broader than that. We work with students with any ongoing diagnosed condition that is impacting their academics. And this includes psychological concerns, such as depression or anxiety. 
medical conditions such as mono or chronic migraines, as well as temporary injuries like concussions or a broken arm or maybe even injuries from a car accident. Our goal is to provide an environment of holistic health and support to students who are facing issues that have been placed in their path. We work to help them navigate these obstacles so that they are able to run the same race as everyone else. By nature, many of the issues our students are facing are not naturally something they might want to be discussing with their peers. And so often they may feel like they're alone in their suffering. But the ironic thing is so many more are facing these same battles and may never know how truly common it is. It's a self-perpetuating cycle that cultivates silence rather than open understanding. And with that comes assumption and maybe even misunderstanding or stigmas regarding registering with the Learning Center. Over the course of our lifetime, most of us will have a condition that is within the realm of what we do at the Learning Center. None of us are exempt. We are finite human beings, all vulnerable to the brokenness in this world. And we are also made in the image of an infinite God who knows each one of us and knows our story. I'm here to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I truly believe I have worked with some of the most intelligent, hardworking, and heroic souls on campus. There have been days when I have sat with a student to hear them process their story and what they're dealing with and literally have tears running down my face as I close the door because of the beauty of their hearts and the courage of their spirit to overcome incredible difficulty in their life, much of which few will ever know. The students you have heard from today are a sample of such students, and I am truly honored to have had the opportunity to know each and every one of them. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything, from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.